all, welcome to Silent Voices. We're having another edition of this program, and we have a special guest today who has come all the way up here from Florida. And Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's really nice having you here. So, do you have family in this area? Is that? I do. Almost all of my family is in this area. Oh, wow. Well, it makes it nice at least you come up for one trip. You can catch everybody all at once. Absolutely. <laughs> Instead Absolutely. of being all over the country. Yes. So you're aware that we're working on problems from the family courts and so on. And how did uh, this get involved? How did you get involved with it in the first place? Well, we had a personal experience that we went through back in, it started in November of 2000. We had a 12-year-old son who had received some discipline that he felt was unfair. And he um, went to school and he told on us. And um, the officer at the school called the Child Protective Services in. And after interviewing... What 12-year-old doesn't think they've received unfair <laughs> discipline? <laughs> well, you know, absolutely. That's the way... <laughs> that's so. what I think, too. <laughs> but um, un I was... I, I worked with the school system also, but a different school system, so I know how they think. <laughs> and uh -huh. um, Child Protective uh -huh. Services came in and interviewed him and also went and interviewed our two younger children. We are a blended family. I had four teenagers at the time. Oh, wow. And then th three younger children that came with my new marriage. Seven children. Seven ch children. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And uh, they did not interview any of our older children, just these three younger children. And um, they felt that uh, my husband, because he had disciplined sh our, our son, had abused him. And after that night, uh, the um, agent that had come into our home called in another one. And she was so aggravated by our husband, my husband, that she said, uh, I am going to see to it that you are charged in criminal courts also. Oh, wow. After, this was one day? This was all in one day. So he wasn't criminally charged that day, but she had threatened us that day with that, so we knew that was going to come at us. Well, that would certainly influence anything you thought or said after that. Oh, yeah. That would <laughs> that put terror and fear in your heart. Yes, yes, it did. It did. And, and we were already just like deer in headlights because we tried to get some control over this son of ours that we had been dealing with, I'd been to school over, I'd had multiple constant calls from the school. Uh, you know, just, we were just having problems with him and trying to deal with them the best we could. Some children, you just do have problems. So uh, this was kind of an ongoing thing in the school. Yes. Was there a particular incident in that other than the fact that he told on the counselor? Or? Uh, well, the incident that led up to it was that he had been refusing to do any homework and turn it in. And so teachers continued to call, and I continued to go up to the school and meet with the school. And um, so my husband and I sat down with him, and we had tried different forms of punishment, you know, uh, grounding and, and, and anything he didn't mind, he enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> and so my husband and I sat down with him, and my husband says, you know, Sean, if you are unwilling to do your homework, then I'm just going to give you a spanking. And he says, but I'm going to give you 24 hours, and you can decide. And at the next day when my husband came home, he, uh, sat, we sat down with him, and Sean said, we asked Sean, what, what was your decision? And he said, I'm not going to do it, and you can't make me. And my husband said, well, then you know what that means. 
And I was present. Um, it was not a hollering and screaming event. He just got a few swats on his butt, nothing that was abusive. And that was it. But Sean was angry. And that was the beginning of a nightmare. A horrible nightmare. Wow. I wonder if there's any parents that ever haven't sat in that situation. You know, I raised three teenagers at once. And <laughs> you know what? They didn't ever do their homework. <laughs> I didn't make them do it. <laughs> I didn't even try. I had my hands full. Mm -hmm. You know, and so this whole thing started over him not doing it. He had never done it, and I just had constant phone calls from the school and constant notebooks where the teachers made us sign that we were getting his work and standing over him, but he still wouldn't turn it in. It was, he it was, he'd been abandoned by his mother, and I adopted him, and so there were issues, underlying issues there. Mm -hmm. And we were just trying to deal with him the best that we could, and... So finally we resorted to corporal punishment and yeah wow that's um, I can imagine it's just really hard I, I know I used to spank a couple of my children a little bit too and today I apologize to my kids for it I still feel bad about it at that time I absolutely didn't know what to do mm -hmm. as a single mother now my kids say, oh, mom, you didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. they, they knew if I got that upset and things mm -hmm. were that out of hand, they knew that there was something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that was, uh, what happened next after that then? Well, Bethany Children's Services were called in also. So Child Protective Services called Bethany? Yes. So we had both services in our home. And um, they were both coming in, they, miles of paperwork being filled out, um, miles of threats, you know, if you don't do this, then we can do this against you. Uh, we had to get an attorney. Um, we had to take Sean to a doctor, and our doctor looked at us and said, why are you bringing him here again? <laughs> and I was trying to explain it to her, and which I'm thankful in the end, as we get to that, I'll tell you why I'm thankful we took Sean, because she was very useful uh, when we went to court over this. But um, the, they both showed up every week at different times. Um, the criminal files or charges were filed. My husband was arrested. And he was um, not allowed back in our home. And this was in November of that year. And he was uh, not allowed back into our home until after the court case, which was not until the following January. We had to get a second attorney because the first attorney told him to go to court and plead guilty. And we knew that that was the wrong thing to do. Just common sense told us that, and we knew he hadn't done anything wrong. I'm glad you thought of that. Yeah, yeah. I really am. And we had already given the first attorney over $4,000 to represent us, and he had just said, just do whatever they say to do. And so I went and got a second attorney for my husband who said, absolutely not. Tell him to plead not guilty, and we're going to get through this thing together. And he was a wonderful godsend in our lives. Wow, you are fortunate to have found a good attorney. Yes. I know many attorneys just say, do what they tell you. Yes. And I think it's gotten progressively worse even in court since that time. But so, so he was out of the home for about two months then? Um, nearly three months. Nearly three months, he was out of the home over the holidays. Um, the court, the first trial that we went to was for the criminal trial, and um, we we had a bench trial. And what uh, is a bench trial? It's before the judge, and uh -huh. the judge 
decides rather than us going and ha going through a jury and all of that we just went before a judge uh, de-stress us and let the let the judge just decide whether my husband was guilty of a felony crime of child abuse which it was a felony crime that they charged him with and um, our doctor was called to the witness stand and that's where she it, it had been, uh, you know, one of those things that we didn't see coming, but we're thankful that we had taken them to the doctor because she said, absolutely, yeah. this child has not been abused. Right. And um, he not only uh, found my husband not guilty, but he also said, this case is dismissed and it's to be expunged wow. in the criminal courts. That's really good. Yeah. Wow, and then did they expunge it? To our knowledge, it is, and our attorney says it, it is, although um, our attorney has also said that it has been used in a few cases in the state of Michigan um, when attorneys are trying to decide what's considered child abuse and what isn't. So somewhere there is some availability that our case has been used. Um, as an example. Yes. Yeah. Well, and um, due to the fact that we have computers now, these things can keep, be hidden in many, many places. And if someone has, wants to get you or some reason, they can quite often dig something up. Yeah. So do you have any papers or anything that was expunged? Well, we have transcripts of the court case, but we don't have anything that says it was expunged. But our attorney says he, that it was. So we're, like I said, we're trusting him on that. And yeah, he's, he's giving you really good advice. Yes, and they sent the fingerprints back from the state of Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that's a good sign. So, okay, now was he able to see you or the children during this time? I could see him, but he was not allowed to see any of our children that were in the home. We had an adult son that he went and lived with during that time. And I was allowed to see him, but he was not allowed to see any of the children that lived in the home. Wow. Yes. So then you went to court in January, mm -hmm. and the judge said he wasn't guilty then. Absolutely, yes. And you'd think it'd be finished? Yeah. Well, we had to go to family court after that. Oh, okay. Because that was, that was just the criminal courts. Oh. And so we had to go to family court also. And in family court, um, the judge also found that we were not um, abusive parents and that um, they were to get out of our home and allow us to raise our children because he said, we're dealing with some very difficult circumstances and they need to allow us to deal with them, figure them out and deal with them. Um, yes, we thought we would have been finished, but Bethany Children's Services continued to call and showed up at our doorstep. And we had to once again get our attorney back involved. And uh, they told us that they were not bound by what the court said. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So, did Bethany set appointments for these visits? No. They just showed up at the door, in which I did not allow them in, but I did contact our attorney, and our attorney uh, took care of it. Um, but he did advise that maybe we relocate to counter the harassment. Wow, so... Bethany is above the law? Is that? <laughs> Apparently, that's, you know, that's kind of the way we felt, you know. Um, we, you have two organizations here that are, are formed to work for the family, mm -hmm. and they're given an enormous amount of power. And, I, and being so intimately involved with them at that time, I'm not seeing the checks and the balances um, because they can come into the home and totally disrupt 
the home. And it's at, it's at, you're at their mercy, you know. Yeah. And, and if I wanted to do anything or say anything, then I was totally out of, out of line. And some of those visits that were taking place, um, you know, my third graders were being told, if your mommy's being mean, you know, just call me. And it really? was taking the power over, of anything right out of my hands, and it put into their minds that, you know, I can't so much as say a word to my child in correction, because any child in growing up thinks their parents mean from time to time. Oh, they all do. Definitely. I mean, and know. instead of helping the family and 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 getting in there with with and working for the family in the places where they need to be. Mhm. Mm they they I don't they're tearing the family apart. Well, if they were really there to help you, they would sit down and work through a problem with you and su suggest maybe another parenting skill or yes. a different way to handle things. Yes. Did you hear them say to your young children that they could tell them if you did something mean? Yes. Yes, I heard that. Did they have a chance to talk to your young children when you weren't there? They always made me stay out of the room, but I always stayed close enough to the room where I could at least hear the conversation. Wow. Because, you know, these children were children that I had to raise yet. And how old were they? Well, they were in the third grade, so that would have made them eight, you know. Seven, eight. Under right. tying them that you might be a mean mommy mm -hmm. and they could yeah. go to your child, to the yeah. counselor. Yeah. And we were put under a microscope. The food that I fed them, you know, I was threatened over that. If you don't feed them enough. My children were, I was up every morning, I fed them breakfast, I packed them a lunch, they they ate a snack after school, they got <laughs> supper, you know. I worked in the school systems, I saw kids that didn't get regular meals, you know. Sure. And so I know what abuse is. And, and, and for somebody to come into my home and threaten me when you're supposed to be an agency that works for the family, for the good of the family, is what I found to be so harmful and repulsive. Yes, they're, they're just totally undermining you. And sometimes with a very, maybe a, a, a gentle approach like they were doing, the undermining is worse because it's not so blatant and obvious. You know, your child might just really believe them that this was a nice person, a nice friend, yes. that they could go cry on their shoulder or something if they got mad at mommy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what kind of work did you do in the school system? I, I worked as a public safety officer in um, the school system. So it, then you, did you have contact with a lot of children or mm -hmm. what's that like? I've, I don't know about that job. What did you do? Um, I, in, in one of the schools, for a few years, I had a partner. I was, in a, I was assigned to a middle school. And then my last few years, um, I, I worked at an alternative learning center. And so I was the only officer there at that school. And so I interacted, and they were high school students. I, I, was, I interacted constantly. Oh, I bet you did. Yeah. That could be quite a challenge, it too. Was, it was very challenging, but I loved it. You loved it? I loved it. Well, it's good. We need people like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so what's happening with your family at home? Did that have any reflection on your job? Um, at, at that time, my, my health had taken a bad turn, and so I was getting ready to leave the system 
anyway because of my health. Um, but the repercussions that the whole thing had on our family, you know, uh, emotionally, um, it, I, I was afraid to even interact with people for a few years after this happened. So you had some scars. Oh, major scars. And financially, the cost of attorneys. We spent well over $10,000 representing ourselves in courts. You know, um, so you have these wounds, and then trying to pull the family back together is just, um, you're left reeling. You get through it, and you're left reeling. Yes, and it sounds like this was a second marriage for you also? Yes, or? this had been a second marriage. And are you still married to this gentleman? Yes, we're still married. Well, that's great. It's great that yes. you've seen your way through it. Yes. I can imagine, and I know of circumstances that haven't worked that well, mm -hmm. you know. So then you you're became ill or you had some problems? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've been ill for quite a while. So did you, were you able to end the contact with Bethany Christian Homes and Friends of the Court? Um, we left the state of Michigan. You did? We did. We left the state of Michigan. We relocated and started our life over in another state. Wow. So I don't know if we hadn't, if it would have been over. I, I, I don't know that. But we, we did leave the state of Michigan. So is your husband's family here also? Yes. So all your family is here, and you left the whole state of Michigan? Yes. Just because of these problems? Yes. I can understand why you did it, that's for sure. So have you been able to rebuild a new life and have some calmness and peace about your life? Well, seven children. I don't know how much <laughs> calmness you have in your life. That's right. How old are they now? <laughs> well, the youngest ones graduate this year. Oh, from high school? Yes. Oh, and, wow. and we have six grandchildren, almost eight. So, um, you know. But we've, we have gotten past that and moved on, to, moved on to, to another life, you know, and, uh, and I can reflect on it, and um, I've grown from it, and I think that if anybody goes through something that devastating, um, because being a mother was always one of the most important things in my life, and having something like that happen just hit at the very core of me. And I think if somebody can survive something that devastating and, and get, get past it and somehow allow it to, to change you enough so that you can be productive and use it in any kind of positive way to help others in any way, then you've grown yourself. Yeah, you sound like a very forgiving person and like you, you've used these circumstances to move forward in a healthy way within your family. I'm just recalling something. You said being a mother was really the most important thing to you. Did you say something about adopting this 12-year-old child? I adopted the, the younger three when I met my husband. Oh, okay. Yes. So... Motherhood really does mean a lot to you yes. then, that you wanted to do that. Yes. Well, you are to be commended for doing that. I really respect you for that. Thank you. So, is there anything else that I'm missing that you want to tell about mm -hmm. your story? Um, I would just encourage anybody who's going through anything like this to just hang in there and um, try to make it. Uh, get through it, you know. I, I, I look back on those days and I got through it by one prayer, one tear, one cup of coffee, one hug at a time. Yeah. And right. 
that's the only way I got through it. And anybody who's going through something like that, just, just do it one thing at a time. Yes, I, uh, you've done really good things, and I'm glad that they finally did get out of your life, although you had to move to Florida and away from all your families. I think that's unfortunate. And it's, um, it's really good that you can carry on. Thank you. So has Bethany Christian Homes left you alone now? They have. They have since we left the state. Do you have any fear when you come back to the state that something might happen again? I don't, but I do for my children. I don't want them to live here with my grandchildren. I, that fear is always in my mind and my heart. That's another reason why people can't live in the state of Michigan. Yes. No, I hear many parents that leave the state because of the abuse of the system. So, how about Child Protective Services? Do they leave you alone? They, they, they left us alone after it was dismissed in the courts. But, you know, once again, I would not want my children to raise my grandchildren here. Just because um, it was such a short time that we went through it, but they were so intense and I, I really believe that we we were so fortunate. We were fortunate. You were. We were very fortunate. You really were. You. Know. you um, I hear of stories that have continued on. We were seniors. I mean, mm -hmm. yours is actually. I mean, you didn't do anything wrong at all. I mean, you you simply were disciplining your child. I mean, you didn't do anything wrong at all. You know, and I hear so many stories that start out like that, and and they keep coming back, friends of the court, Bethany, they just keep coming back and harassing the parents, mm -hmm. and eventually they find something else wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, and many people lose their whole, their livelihood, their houses, everything. Everything. And you were, you were lucky. You were one of the lucky ones to be That's able to find a second attorney and be a good one. Absolutely. That's so, well, thank you very much for thank coming. Thank you for having and me. Really appreciate having you on the show of Silent Voices today. Thank you. And remember, your voice can make the difference in more people's lives. This is a Voices of Silent Voices, and we'll be back with another episode. Mm -hmm.